October 24, 1929, Black Thursday. Wall Street traders watched in horror as 3 million shares changed hands in the first three minutes of trading. By day's end, fortunes built over decades had vanished. But here's what nobody tells you. The real crash had started six months earlier. They just didn't know it yet. The 1929 crash followed a precise seven-stage pattern, a pattern so consistent, so predictable, that when you understand it, you can see it forming in real time. Right now, in November 2025, we're in stage five, the same stage where, in 1929, people still believed everything would be fine. The Schiller P.E. ratio just hit 39.7, the second highest in 154 years. That century-old trend line connecting 1929 and 2000, it just kissed the market again. Let me show you the pattern and why this time might not be different. Stage one, the prosperity illusion. Every crash starts with a dream. Picture 1925. Henry Ford's Model T is everywhere. Radios in every home. Electric refrigerators replacing ice boxes. Americans are living through a genuine technological revolution. Corporate profits are soaring, up 36.6% in just six months of 1929. This is real. This is progress. Except the Federal Reserve is pumping the money supply up 60%. Easy credit cheap money. The real growth gets turbocharged into something dangerous. Now picture today. AI is rewriting the rules of business. The revolution feels real because it is real. But we've just come off years of near zero interest rates and trillions in quantitative easing. Asset prices have inflated beyond anything fundamentals justify. Same dream, same drug, different decade. Stage two, when the gold rush begins. By 1928, nobody's talking about technology anymore. They're talking about money, easy money. A secretary puts 10% down on a stock, borrows the rest from her broker, and doubles her money in weeks. The shoeshine boy is giving stock tips. Goldman Sachs launches investment trusts that are really just leveraged pyramids, and they'll eventually wipe out the equivalent of $684 billion. The story you heard wasn't about innovation. It was about your neighbor getting rich while you worked. Flash forward, we now have 701 leveraged ETFs, products designed to amplify every market move. Private credit markets have ballooned into a multi-trillion dollar shadow where even regulators admit they don't know the risks. Crypto millionaires, meme stock legends, the conversation shifted. It's not about AI changing the world, it's about not missing out. Stage three, when insanity becomes wisdom. September 1929, stock prices are 32 times earnings, double the historical norm. But economists have explanations. The modern corporation has learned to smooth earnings. Technology has created a permanently high plateau. The old metrics don't apply anymore. Right now, we're at a P.E. of 31. The Schiller Cape, which Warren Buffett himself watches, sits at 39.7. Historical average, 17. We're not just high. We're stratospheric. And what do we hear? AI will create a productivity boom that justifies these prices. Low interest rates make this the new normal. This time is different. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Every single time the CAPE ratio exceeded 30 and stayed there, it's been followed by market declines between 20 and 89%. Not some of the time, every single time. Stage four, when the party's only for the few. By 1929, the wealth gap had become a chasm. The economy was running on the spending of a handful of millionaires while average Americans struggled. It looked fine until it wasn't. Today, the top 10% control 67.3% of America's wealth, the same concentration as 1929. Meanwhile, everyone else is drowning in debt. Credit cards maxed at $1.2 trillion, 31% higher than before the pandemic. The economy needs people to spend, but only the rich can afford to. And their wealth? It's all in stocks. When those numbers turn red, the spending stops, and everyone else is already tapped out. Stage five, the warnings everyone ignores. March 1929, the Federal Reserve issues a warning about speculation. The market drops, panic ripples through Wall Street. Then National City Bank steps in with $25 million. Headlines read, crisis averted. 
investors flood back in. The market climbs for seven more months, then October comes. Right now, 22 states are in recession or high risk. That's nearly half the country. The hiring rate has dropped to 3.4%, the same level we saw crawling out of 2008. Wall Street economists put recession odds at 40% in the next year. The market hit all-time highs in February 2025. By October, the Nasdaq was down 11%, the S&P down 6%. Not a crash, not yet, just tremors. But here's what happened in 1929 and what's happening now. Authorities say everything's fine, investors call every dip a buying opportunity, and beneath the surface, the cracks keep spreading. We're in the calm before the storm. The question is, do you see it? Stage 6. The Spark Nobody Sees Coming October 23, 1929, 2.30 p.m. In the last hour of trading, the market drops 4.6%. No obvious reason, just something breaks. The next morning, panic. Black Thursday, 11% gone at the opening bell. The Dow peaked at 381 in September. By November, it was at 199. By 1932, 41, an 89% wipeout. What triggers the next one? Maybe it's the $37.8 trillion in U.S. debt and $1.2 trillion in annual interest payments becoming unsustainable? Maybe trade wars will escalate. Maybe a major corporation fails and the private credit market unravels. Maybe something we're not even watching. The trigger doesn't matter. The conditions are what matter. And the conditions are set. Stage 7. The Cascade, when everything falls apart faster than anyone imagined. After October 1929, it wasn't just stocks. 4,000 banks failed. People lost their life savings, not because they gambled, but because they trusted banks. Unemployment hit 25%. The Great Depression lasted a decade. Why did it get so bad? Leverage. When prices dropped a little, margin calls forced people to sell everything, pushing prices lower, triggering more margin calls, a death spiral. Banks were tied to the market. When stocks died, banks died. When banks died, the money supply died. And then governments made it worse, raising interest rates, passing tariffs, choking off what little life remained. Today, the system is more interconnected. Debt is higher. Central banks already fired their big guns. And if AI really does accelerate job losses during a downturn, we're looking at something history hasn't seen before. So here we are, stage five of seven. The same stage where in 1929, people still believed everything would be fine. All the warning lights are flashing. Valuations are extreme. Inequality matches 1929. Debt is at record levels. The economy is fracturing beneath the surface. Does this guarantee a crash? No, markets can stay irrational. Timing is impossible. But here's what I know. Patterns repeat because human psychology repeats. Fear, greed, denial. The pattern isn't in the charts, it's in us. Understanding this isn't about fear, it's about seeing clearly, making informed decisions, being prepared instead of being blindsided. The question isn't if you believe a crash is coming, the question is, what are you doing with this information? Every week I break down what's really happening in the economy, the patterns the mainstream misses, the data that actually matters, the history that keeps repeating. If you found this analysis valuable, kindly subscribe to my channel. Drop a comment below with your thoughts. What patterns are you seeing in today's economy? I love hearing different perspectives and learning from this community every day. And if someone you know would benefit from understanding these economic cycles, share this video with them. Financial literacy is how we all make better decisions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.